Welcome to the third and last part about the LCD. In this part, unusual color techniques that I still do not completely understand. So this will be more a showcase rather than an explanation. But before I um, explain what you see here, I'll show you a nice collection of unusual color LCD watches. The display on this watch does not use a regular color filter. The red color is in front of the silver background and diffuses light on its own. The result is that depending on the view and angle, the digits look either silver or black. If the red would be the background, the digits would always be black, like I did here with the clock. Here's another watch using the same technique. These two watches show even better that the liquid crystal itself blocks and diffuses the light. The background is a mirror. So if the crystal is blocking and diffusing the light, why would you still need a polarizer? Only one way to find out. Remove the polarizer. And here's the answer. Everything's orange now. Add a polarizer and the digits appear. But the orange is not transparent. The only conclusion I can draw is that the liquid crystal itself is pigmented, thereby not only blocking, but diffusing light as well. Another watch. The unusual thing about this watch is that it has a multicolor backlight that inverts the display as well. It turns out that this is the same technique used in the watches I showed before, but now with three separate colors. That doesn't explain, by the way, how the light blocking and diffusing part is also the light emitting part. So complex. By reversing the polarizer on this watch, I can turn it into a three-color negative display. Which makes me doubt highly if indeed the liquid crystal is pigmented, because that would mean they divided three liquid crystals into one glass unit. Another question instead of an explanation. Sorry. This watch seems nothing special until you turn on the backlight. The digits light up blue and the world map green, which seems logical since the world map background is green. I've now cut the polarizer and flipped the digits part, revealing the same technique again. The liquid crystal seems blue. But the strange thing about this backlight, or should I say front light, is that the green is printed on the silver back, so behind the light emitting LCD. The green somehow influences the backlight while the backlight is not bouncing off it, which becomes very clear in complete darkness. I don't have the answer. Moving on. This one can light up in a variety of colors and is currently in Vegas mode. This is achieved with an RGB LED and a light diffusion grid, which you can recognize by the dotted pattern. Its liquid crystal seems to be grey, which may be the answer why it diffuses the light so well. And they also use the background color to achieve a two-tone backlight. That's it concerning pigmented liquid crystals, if that's what it is. This display can change its color from red to black or transparent achieved by placing two LCDs between the polarizers, giving you the fancy option to change the color scheme. The red color appears when overlapping segments are active. You'd think that two active LCDs would make it transparent again, but for some reason when both are active, only red light passes. Alright, I think we've covered enough watches for now. Let's move on. <clears throat> Let's see, where were we? 
Um, hang on. This is the Casio Colored Digital Diary from the mid-90s. I wonder, did anyone really use this product? I got it secondhand for its three-color display. Just in time, because after filming, it stopped working. But this is a color-coded, super-twisted, nematic, quick slicking <coughs> display. I've spent quite some time staring in awe at its magnificence. Because this color LCD is unlike any other. If you look at the individual pixels, you'll notice that there are no red, green and blue sub-pixels. It is actually the one pixel itself changing color. Oh, have I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out. But I almost know it now. So here we go, an explanation. Apart from black, this display can also show two shades of gray. And these three values of intensity somehow change into a color by using a very smart color filtering technique. Very few products ever had this type of display, including the Casio Color Power Graphic Calculator. It's quite hard to read in comparison with a normal LCD, but at least it's three color. Because this product is much less rare, I took the opportunity to once again remove the polarizer. Which you shouldn't do using a segmented blade knife, because you'll cut your finger when the knife breaks, while the other part almost hits your eyeball. That was satisfying. So here's the polarizer. When changing its rotation, the display changes color. Looking at this macro footage while rotating a polarizer, they seem to be using a film that colors the polarized light. Something similar to the tape I used in the previous episode. And the polarizer itself also does something similar. And also has a film on it. This complex filtering technique turns shades of grey into colors. This never became more than a gimmick. I wonder if its development hadn't stopped. You could be very well looking at a display without color subpixels right now. Speaking of color without subpixels, here's another approach in the form of a Tetris game. You may notice the flickering display. And that's because the backlight is not really white, but it's instead changing from red to green to blue really fast. When holding it in the sun, the colors vanish because the backlight isn't bright enough. To give segments their color, they turn on or off in sync with the red, green and blue, dependent of the required color. And last and least is of course red, green and blue subpixels. There's red, there's green, there's blue, and depending on the brightness, you get any color you want. This display is interesting because it's reflective as well. Too bad this is not done anymore due to the contrast battle. The production costs of color displays have dropped so much that you can get your own smartwatch for only a couple of dollars, literally. So boring actually, huh? All color displays are the same these days. Of course there's OLED, Soon there will be micro LED, but in essence, it's all the same. And so, finally, part 3 about the LCD is done. Now what? Well, we'll see if my upload rate this year will be any better. I don't know what the next video will be about, or when it will be released, so be sure to stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Did you know by the way that this is the second time in my life I wear this? Does it suit me?